Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 20 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In this video, we are going to talk about the preparation of alkenes. There are four methods of preparation of alkenes. One method is an addition reaction and the other three are elimination reactions. We are going to start with the first method which is an addition reaction. We can prepare alkenes from alkynes. And we can prepare them from alkynes by addition of hydrogen. Let's just see what an alkene, what an alkane is like and how pi bonds are formed. Let us say I have ethane. Ethane would be carbon, carbon single bond, and then there are three hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen, hydrogen, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and a hydrogen here. Right? If I remove two hydrogens, Every bond we know is a shared pair of electrons. So if I remove two hydrogens, what is happening? The hydrogen is taking its electron and moving away. This hydrogen also takes its electron and moves away. And both the carbons get back their electrons. Now, since the octet is not completed, every carbon needs to form four bonds. And these carbons are now forming only three bonds. And each carbon has one electron. They share this pair of electrons both the carbons, they give, they contribute that electron and the second bond, which is the pi bond, is formed. That is how el an alkene, you will get an alkene from an alkane. Now, you would say I'm talking of the opposite of elimination, but I really want to uh, explain what is the difference in bonding or number of hydrogen atoms in an alkane or a saturated or unsaturated hydrocarbon. If I have to convert now this alkene into an alkyne, I will have to remove two more hydrogens and the same thing happens. The two hydrogens take away their electrons and the carbons have one electron each and they form the second pi bond. So this results in the formation of ethyne. If I have to convert the ethyne now, if I have to do the reverse of this, I have this alkyne which is ethyne and I want to prepare ethene from it. What would I have to do? Just go back one step from what I did earlier. All I have to do is now break one of these bonds so both the carbons get back their electrons and add one hydrogen each to each carbon. So what I'm doing is I'm adding to the uh, alkyne, that is the ethyne, I'm adding one, uh, two atoms of hydrogen. You know, when reactions are taking place, the hydrogens that are being added are, uh, they don't decide that they are going to break only one bond. There must be so many more hydrogens. So they can easily break the second pi bond also and result in the formation of the original alkane. It is possible since the reaction mixture has hydrogen and it has an unsaturated uh, bond also, a pi bond. That bond also could have broken and you could have got back your ethane, that is the saturated hydrocarbon. But we don't want this. We want to get from the alkyne, we only want to partially reduce it. Addition of hydrogen is known as reduction. So we only want to partially reduce this uh, compound so that one of the pi bonds breaks and adds on the hydrogen but the other pi bond remains so that it remains an alkene. It does not turn into an alkane. So in this first method of preparation what is done? It is prepared from alkynes and in order to avoid this, you know, the reduction that is done, the reduction should not be free reduction, that as much hydrogen is present, all of it can be used. It should not be such a situation. The reduction should be controlled. It should be limited so that, so that it does not get converted into an alkane instead. Excuse me. So this reduction has to be controlled so that the alkene that is the alkyne does not get reduced completely to an alkane but it remains an alkene. So how do we prepare uh, alkenes from alkynes? Partial reduction is done. Now you understand why partial reduction? We do not want 
all the pi bonds, that is both the pi bonds of an alkyne to be reduced. We only want one of the pi bonds to be reduced. So partial reduction with calculated amount of hydrogen. You will not give free hydrogen to it. The, the hydrogen will be limited. So there's a calculated amount of hydrogen and partial reduction takes place in the presence. And how do we do this? How do we control it and how do we have because when you have a reaction mixture and you're putting a limited amount of hydrogen in it, you cannot tell the hydrogen you can go and attack only one of the bonds. So how do you manage such a situation? So you give a limited, a very calculated amount of hydrogen and we are trying to carry out the partial reduction and how are we trying to do it? In the presence of pelletized charcoal. Pelletized charcoal, it provides the medium at which, um, uh, along which this reaction will take place. So the uh, alkyne is going to settle down on it. It, is, it acts as a catalyst and that is where the reaction takes place. But this charcoal is the one which is going to help in the uh, incomplete reduction. So we deactivate the charcoal. We make the catalyst... Um, deactivated and how do we deactivate the catalyst we deactivate the catalyst by poisoning it we do not let it work as much as it can we just limit the catalyst and how do we do that we in the presence of pelletized charcoal which is the catalyst which has been partially deactivated and how do we deactivate it by using poisons like sulfur compounds or quinoline Quinoline or sulfur compounds, they have an effect on the, they do not have an effect on the alkyne. They have an effect on the catalyst that is pelletized charcoal. They deactivate the pelletized charcoal. So now when the reaction takes place, so what are the precautions that you took? You use the catalyst because the reaction would not have taken place without the catalyst. So you used pelletized carbon charcoal. But you deactivated the charcoal using poisons like sulfur or quinoline. And after using that, you also used a very limited quantity of hydrogen, calculated amount, so that even if this goes wrong, you have only so much hydrogen that can break only one, uh, partially the bonds, not complete bonds of the alkyne. So this partially deactivated pelletized charcoal, it has been given a special name, which is Lindler's catalyst. So Lindler's catalyst, it and what happens as a result of this reaction? It's very interesting. It only gives the cis isomer. When you use the Lindler's catalyst, it only gives you the cis isomer. It does not give you the trans isomer of the alkene. For example, now, R, C, if R is an alkyl group, C, triple bond C, so it's an alkyne which has R alkyl groups, different alkyl groups attached to it. And you make it react with hydrogen, only one molecule of hydrogen if you're looking here. And pelletized charcoal, which is Lindler's catalyst, which has been poisoned with sulfur compounds of penulin, so that the product that you get will always be a cis isomer. So you get the cis alkene. Cis means that both the alkyl groups are on one side of the carbon-carbon double bond and both the hydrogens which are added are on one side. Now, an example here, you have ethyne. Ethyne on reaction with hydrogen in the presence of pelletized charcoal. It's understood pelletized charcoal is Lindler's catalyst. Will give you CH2, double bond CH2. It will give you ethene. Now tell me, would you have the cis isomer in ethene? No, you cannot because whenever you have the same group or atom attached to the carbon, which is bound by a double bond, you cannot have the cis trans isomers. The geometrical isomers there are not possible. So ethene, there is only one product, simple ethene. Similarly, if you take propyne, in the case of propyne, now this is, these are the two carbons which have the triple bond on addition of hydrogen. It will result in the formation of propene. This again has the same situation. This carbon is attached to two hydrogens and both the hydrogens are identical. Therefore, this also will not show cis-trans isomerism. But after this, if you have butene, uh, butyne, from there, you will start getting the cis-trans isomers. 
And in the case of if you're using Lindner's catalyst, you are only going to get the cis isomer. You're not going to get the trans isomer. This is really important that you remember when you're using Lindner's catalyst, the product that you get would be a cis isomer. So will propene thus obtained, the propene that you obtained here, will it show geometrical isomerism? Of course not. It cannot show geometrical isomerism because the carbon-carbon double bond, the two carbons which have uh, the double bonds, uh, both the carbons should have the two groups that are attached to them should be different groups. If they are similar groups, uh, cis trans isomerism or geometrical isomerism does not uh, occur. So, would they have, would, will we will you obtain, uh, I mean, the propene thus obtained, would it show geometrical isomerism? No, it would not show geometrical isomerism. Now, this is the method to get the cis isomer. If we want the trans isomer, you can still get it by another, by the use of another catalyst, which is known as the birch reagent. What is birch reagent? Alkynes can also be reduced with sodium in liquid ammonia. If you use sodium in liquid ammonia, you get the trans alkene. You do not get the cis isomer, you always get the trans isomer. So when you are trying to, when your aim is to obtain either the cis isomer or the trans isomer, you will not, you will try to use this method of preparation. That is, you will try to prepare that alkene from alkynes. If you want a specific um, isomer, that is, you want only the cis isomer or only the trans isomer, you would try to use an alkyne. If you want the cis isomer, you will use Lindler's catalyst. And if you want the trans isomer, you will read, you will use birch reagent. So again, this is the alkyne, R and R dash are two alkyl groups, and these are the two carbons which are dashed, uh, which have got triple bond. Partial reduction takes place again in the presence of sodium with liquid ammonia. And in this case, you will get the trans alkene, right? So sodium in liquid ammonia is known as birch reagent. So this is the first method of preparation of alkenes. The next method is that we'll be preparing alkenes from alkyl halides, but I'll do that in the next video. So if you wish to see other videos of this chapter, please uh, click the link that will appear on your screen um, on the video. And with this, I'll wrap up this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.